What if I told you I just figured out how to make döner kebab meat at home? What, you think is not a big deal? Because all you need is a mini rotisserie grill and you're good to go, the rest is easy, because that's what I thought until I tried it. And now I know that it kind of works, but it's also mostly useless. I'll explain later. No, 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 no. I have found at least two much better and simpler ways to get a result that hits home even for a döner aficionado like myself. Before we get started, this video is sponsored by Squarespace, my favorite all-in-one solution for everybody who wants to put something on a beautiful website, which is in fact exactly what I'm going to do with this recipe, but more on that later. For now, let me walk you through my döner making process and you will know more than you ever wanted about making döner meat. So, there are two main things we need to get right here. The first one is flavor and the second one is texture. And it turns out that flavor is actually the easy part. The whole trick is to make a marinade of dried herbs and spices on a paprika and oregano base. Those two are the key. I also added some marjorie and rosemary. Later on I found that basil and thyme are also great additions, so you know there is some room for you to play around. Mix those with a few scoops of salt and there's your döner seasoning. We're gonna use yogurt as the liquid component of this marinade. That seems to be the go-to in most Turkish recipes I researched. Oh, and if you want that street food flavor, don't forget a good sprinkle of MSG. Actually, let me remind you that this is in fact what we're doing here. We're not being gourmet, we're not trying to be healthy, no, we are recreating a street food classic in all its nostalgic fast food glory. Speaking of which, let's talk about the hard part, which is the texture. You know those ribbons of delicious thinly shaved meat that's crispy on one side and juicy on the other? Let's see how we can get that. So a classic döner is a stack of interchanging layers of thin veal and minced beef, sometimes beef and lamb. So I flattened a few veal cutlets and added around half of our marinade to them. Quick massage, smells great already and into the fridge we go. The second part is our minced meat, but this is where technique matters quite a bit. If we just use ground meat, the texture would be way too loose. Think burger patty, but we need something dense, almost like a sausage, which means emulsified meat. So I added the mince along with the rest of my marinade to my food processor, helped out with a bit of milk to get things going, and then went for a good few minutes until the meat almost turned into a paste. But now let's talk about rotisserie grills. You might have seen one before, it's basically a miniature version of what a döner place would use. So I started putting my spit together layer by layer, sliced meat and sausage meat and that worked quite well in the beginning but as the spit got bigger it would collapse under its own weight and spread out to the sides which means there is only one solution. If you live in a city like Berlin with lots of döner shops around, you've probably witnessed them setting up shop in the morning and that's when they get their meat delivery. And it's always in the shape of a nice large conical spit. So I'm thinking, how do they do that? Oh right, it's frozen. So I somehow managed to wrap this meaty monstrosity into plastic wrap to hold its shape and into the freezer we go overnight. And this actually worked quite well. It's definitely not collapsing now, and in fact, it was so tall that I had to cut off the top to fit it into my rotisserie. And now, look at that. The word döner comes from a Turkish word that means to rotate and I think we're definitely doing it justice over here. So at this point, I'm super happy, everything looks great, all we gotta do is wait a little. The idea, of course, is that the outside layer cooks through and firms up before the inner core thaws and kind of spreads out to the sides again. And that part actually works. I mean, slowly but steadily, we are getting some browning, we got some juices flowing. I think this is how the döner shops around the world manage their spits as well. But after this step, this is where the trouble started. Once I got my spit to crisp up nicely on the outside, I started shaving off slices of meat. The results were okay, quite tasty actually, but even though I used a really sharp sashimi knife, it was very hard to do this. Let me explain. So while growing up in Berlin, me and my friends had a lot of late night döners in this life and uh, there's an observation we made. Later in the day, and especially at like 2 a.m. or something, most of the döner shops would only have like a very thin and sad looking leftover spit. There's still some meat on it, but just not a lot. And even like a really good döner chef would have a very, very, very hard time getting thin slices off of that. I mean, think about it. A really big spit is heavy. It holds itself together. It probably has a core that's still frozen solid. and. Once it gets tiny, the statics are just completely different. The entire spit, as well as the layers, they start jiggling around and it becomes 
almost impossible to get a good slice. Maybe if you're watching and you're into construction, you could leave a comment and give a more scientific explanation of this. I would really appreciate that. Oh, and also look at the interplay between circumference and curvature. To keep it short, big spit, thin slices, small spit, thick chunks. And if you ever had chunks of street food grade döner meat, you know that is not how it's supposed to be eaten. But the real deal breaker for this machine is time. It took over an hour to get it to a point where I could even start slicing it, which okay, that is fine for the first round, considering it comes out of the freezer and everything, but even after that, it takes at least 20 minutes for the meat to brown again. And that is just not good enough considering, again, the size of our spit. Remember, we're just eating a very thin outside layer of the döner meat. And those commercial spits, they're wide and they're tall. So even if you only brown one side of it and you shave that off, you're gonna have enough meat for at least one full sandwich, maybe even more. But on a small spit like the one I used for this video, I mean, even if you brown the entire thing, the yield is still ridiculously low. So I'm sorry to report, but I believe the home rotisserie, at least for this use case, is kind of a toy. Functionally, it might work, but practically, it just doesn't make any kind of sense to me. Which puts us in a bit of a tricky situation, because if we can't use a rotisserie, but we want that döner style meat, what do we do? Look, what we've done so far is we have mimicked the optics of döner production with the spit and everything, but what if we applied some result-oriented thinking. We want thin shavings of meat that are partially crispy, but also juicy. Let's think outside the box. So I made another batch of meat. This time I went for 100% mince. It's gonna be fine guys, just embrace the fast food feel. Make sure to emulsify that meat really, really well. Once it's nice and pasty, we are putting it in a rectangular baking mold, not too tall, and then sort of making a meatloaf out of it. I baked this guy at 200 degrees Celsius for around 90 minutes and this is what I ended up with. The meat released a lot of fat and juice and it also shrank quite a bit, but that's okay for now. We're gonna rest it in the fridge and after a few hours, you will find that it is super solid and super easy to slice. In fact, if you use a sharp knife, you will get it much thinner than anything you could ever slice off one of these little rotisseries. So we're already much, much closer, but the question is what do we do with this? Because it's cold and not crispy. And I'm also not a fan of the shape yet. So first I tried broiling a batch in the oven, but that was a fail. It really didn't look right. It also was dry as cardboard. So no, that did not work. But you know what finally did? This. Slice your meat as thinly as you possibly can. You almost want flakes. And the good thing is you don't need to make even slices. In fact, a bit of randomness is actually desirable because it's gonna help you make it look more like the real deal. Now you simply wanna sear those flakes in a large skillet and the fact that this meat is terribly dry is actually very helpful because it browns really, really well. And the downside of course is that it's well very dry, but here's a truly magic tip. If you reserved the fat and juice that was released during the baking process, you can now add it back in and this meat somehow just sucks it up like a sponge. I've tried quite a few more things off camera, but this one, this was definitely the second best way to make döner meat at home. And now, what is the best way you might ask? Well, if you're okay with a chicken döner kebab, which is in fact my preferred style of döner, then you, my friend, are in for a treat. Right after a few words from this video's sponsor, Squarespace. You might remember that I am researching all of these döner recipes because I want to build a website that is a one-stop guide for everyone who wants to make döner at home. Squarespace makes that incredibly easy for me. And in fact, every single time I use Squarespace, I discover some new and amazing features. Like for example, if you have a restaurant and you set up a website through Squarespace, you can let people make open table reservations through the website with just a few clicks. So if you feel like sharing your business or just something really cool with the world, head over to Squarespace and start a completely free trial. And once you're ready to launch, make sure to head over to squarespace.com slash Andong to save 10% off your first purchase. And now let's talk about chicken döner. So the big difference here is that for chicken döner, minced meat is not a thing. So we don't have to deal with all of that stuff. Instead, a chicken döner spit will be made out of actual slices of chicken meat. And so when you slice that down, you don't actually get those like thin ribbons that you get from minced meat. No, you get like, like little strips of chicken. 
little crispy strips. That of course is a completely different game and that changes our entire approach. Check this out. To a few deboned chicken thighs, I am adding my spice mix, salt and yogurt. Then I'm simply mixing those up and roasting them at 220 Celsius for about 30 minutes. When they come out, I slice them thinly and then I roast them for a second time along with some sliced red bell peppers just until we get some color on the outside. And that, you guys, is the real deal. Dark chicken meat is almost indestructible, so it stays juicy throughout the whole process and I think the result is almost indistinguishable from what you'd get at the Döner shop. And, you know, I think this is just so much better and easier than wasting your time with one of these little rotisseries. In the last installment of the Döna series, we'll be talking about assembly and sauce, so I'm gonna see you there, guys.